Yeah, we continue with the Wisdom Factory chats, maybe also Corona chats as we started out, because it came about our meetings because of Corona, and I reached out to people and said, why don't we meet and come together and talk a little bit, as we have to be at home anyway. Now I have even a doggy here, he wants to... <laughs> Do you want to participate, Lucky? Lucky! <laughs> He's lucky to be with us. Lucky! We're lucky to have him. <laughs> yeah. She's looking like this to me. <laughs> <laughs> and now she, you can see she is... It, oh no, you can't because I have this background. She was I don't know how you put the background in. It looks like you're in Switzerland or somewhere. No, that's my house, you see, from the yeah. top. <laughs> from the other side, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Lovely. I'm trying out these things. Uh -huh. this is, um, it was in winter <coughs> when everything is blue. You put mm. it on, look, going to the camera down here and uh, clicking near the camera, and then there comes a uh, choose virtual background. All oh, right. You can upload a photo or whatever you want. Oh, I Use see. one of yeah. those, which are. Uh, uh huh. Uh, no, 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 you, you, you stopped the video, near yeah, the video. Yeah, I know. I was going to see if I could do it now. But, oh, it's on the arrow, is it? On the arrow, yeah. Choose virtual background. Oh, right. <laughs> and you can do all sorts of things. Uh -huh. The only thing when you see, I'm, when I move, it looks as if my hair is a little bit, you know, people who have a hair like this, it's going like, oh, my hands. Do you see my hands? They are doing this. Ah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, somehow you like can't. it fades. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Sorry. this is the sixth time we meet. We were expecting somebody else, but who, who knows if she comes or not. In the meantime, we do an update. Uh, I'm, as, I, as you know, probably, I'm Heidi in Italy, and today it's a little coolish, and that's why Ella and I, we didn't meet for, for, for lunch, because... Because of Corona, we don't want to go in each other's houses, but be on the outside because there is no, not much possibility to infect anybody. Although we both have very, let, very little possibility to be infected being almost all the time in our house. Anyway, we wanted to be on the terrace and that's too windy today. It's not, not nice. So we meet mm. at least virtually. And I give over to you, Griselda. Okay, well, this is Griselda, still calling in from North County, San Diego, in California. And um, I knew what we were meeting over here this morning, so I'm like, oh, it gives me a reason to get up early, shower, and have my breakfast, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> Your birthday today? Oh, no, no, I said, no, I said I was meeting with you all, so it gave me a reason to get up and get ready. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, good. I understood my birthday, so I said, wanted to begin to sing. <laughs> okay, I'm Ella, and um, I live not far from Heidi in Italy, and today we've had lovely weather so far, but today it's a bit, it's not bad, it's just that it's, it's grey, you know, and kind of uh, a bit like that. You just, I just wish it would rain because we do need rain desperately. We've hadn't had rain for so very long and everything is very dry, although I don't mind if it doesn't rain, but uh, I think nature needs it. Yeah, uh, I do mind because then in summer um, we have little water and uh, even for the garden, I have now a garden, even if you give water from the well, it's not the same thing than rain. Rain is a, has a different power. So, and mm. you know, you know, it, it's only May, and I'm going up to my vegetable garden over the grass, and the grass is already dry, like yeah. normally it is in July, and this is not good. Yeah, not good. <clears throat> so, but we know that everything is changing, and yeah, we will see how it goes on. No, because. Corona is one of the things uh, which are preoccupying in the, in the world at the moment. And there are many, many other things which need to be addressed and which I hope will be addressed in some way. But <clears throat> let's talk about us, how we, how we live and how your mood is and your perspective for the future. 
Well, I'm, today they've told us that on the 3rd of uh, June, which is very soon actually, uh, they're going to open the borders and so and people can be able to travel to and from Italy without going or in the whole of Europe without going into quarantine. So I was very happy about that because I have a, my daughter and grandchildren are supposed to be coming to Italy in July and so now it looks as if it may be possible to do that. Before I wasn't too sure about it but we'll see what happens. Um, I think we still have to be very careful with the uh, uh, traveling you know but they're driving from France so you know I don't I wouldn't go on an aeroplane for instance uh, I wouldn't uh, go anywhere where there is uh, air conditioning because uh, I don't think air conditioning it's not good anyway but when there's a virus in the air it's definitely not good yeah and um, also in buses and in trains when people are too near to each other it's probably not a good idea and but in your own car it should not be a big problem mm. so <clears throat> i'm glad about that yeah maybe somebody will come to see me then too <laughs> <laughs> because this year seemed to be become a lonely year without my normal friends coming in summer you know yeah I have one friend in particular who came, is coming since 97. He comes once or twice a year, sometimes with his orchestra, sometimes alone, sometimes with a, a girlfriend, sometimes with other friends. And so it's for years and years that he is coming. And this year we were thinking, oh, maybe he cannot come. I don't know if you know him, Ella, Udo? Yeah. Yeah. I've met him at your place with a big, yeah. with a big tuba. He is yes. really, he's sitting uh -huh. on, in, under the tree in the back of the house and is playing tuba. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and when the whole orchestra is here, that's wonderful because it's all day is music and I, I love that. So we will see some good perspective. Thank you, Ella, for saying that. I knew that Germany had opened some borders, but not yet towards Italy. <clears throat> How is it with you, Griselda? Um, I feel like I'm still adjusting to changes. At this last week, I started a new job. So it's uh, mostly working from home and uh, adapting to some technical difficulties because I'm working with my laptop and I haven't accessed a computer laptop yet. Um, so I was having a little bit of issues because my computer is old and the memory dies and sometimes, not dies, but just sometimes it just shuts things down and I'm like, oh, like it's so hard to work with an old computer when you're supposed to work fast. But um, luckily the IT technician told me that I could use the hotspot from the work phone. And I realized that I could also use the hotspot from my own phone to connect with my computer. And so that solved part of the problem. And I was quite relieved. Um, I'm feeling relieved that I get to be at home and work from home, even though ideally, hopefully when things open up, I would prefer to be in the workspace, like physically the office. Um, I wouldn't really have much contact with the public uh, other than staff that gets to see the public. So there would still be that kind of like minimum interaction in a way. So we'll see how things work out. Um, here i think there's a talk about businesses opening up soon i haven't kept up with the dates as to when that would happen and so it's been interesting noticing how some things are happening like I, in the news there was um there was um a city council urging businesses say forget about the county officials and their recommendations just open up your business because we think you should open and then it turns out like a gym uh, like the owner of a fitness center opened up and then he got arrested so it was like oh my god this is this is too much and so i'm trying not to keep up way too much with that but i i think um i'm feeling a little relieved in a way that things maybe might start opening up so that we can kind of all get back to normal even though i do have some concerns as to what that would look like and safety precautions and how do we proceed um then also i'll be moving at the end of the month so i'm trying to take it like sort of like one thing at a time so like right now focusing on the job as much as i can there's other stuff happening like family and relationship dynamics and things like that but i'm trying to just kind of focus on that and then um 
I started taking a, a class, like a healing through the arts class. So that's kind of giving me a sense of connection with people too, who are, um, a lot of them are social workers, palliative care workers. And so it really gives me um, a sense of uh, connection with people, even though it's a virtual online class. But I'm, I'm hanging in there. So it's good to be here. Yeah, hanging in this. Uh, I'm noticing that there is a lot of controversy and even violent contro controversy. Uh, uh, and I don't think that's good. So I try not, I was, Ella, we sometimes exchange some articles and or some videos which seem to be interested. It's interesting, but I try not to go too much into all these things, all in these uh, conspiracy theories and trying to figure out which is true, which is not true. I do think that as Ken Wilber says, nobody is smart enough to be wrong all the time. So I think in everybody's uh, opinion or idea is something, some truth. And, but as soon as people claim that they know the truth, I think that you can be sure that they don't. So, <laughs> you know, so it's good to listen to many perspectives, in my opinion, but not create an ideology or a, a hate towards others who think different. What is that? What, what what strange way of being together? It should a thing like this should bring us together instead of fighting? No, I don't know. How do you see that? Well, I I I think actually that uh, like a friend of mine said, and I think she's absolutely right. When people are angry with you or other people, they're usually angry with themselves. So it's a kind of frustration you know, with themselves that makes them behave like this, I think, um, because it's completely unfounded, most of it, you know, because what is the point in, in, uh, in, in, in using aggression towards other people, you know, in a time like this, you could have different opinions. Um, but I think that just shows how, um, immature these people are themselves you know it doesn't reflect on the on the thing itself it's them that's the problem not the thing yeah it's it's very true and um, you know that we think in integral about the spiral about the levels of development and in a moment of crisis you can really see who people are if they go back fall back into lower levels or if they uh, try to, to step up. And it seems that most people are not mature enough to, to take the challenge to, to step up, but they go down because it's easier to find somebody to blame, no? Like your president is blaming uh, China and uh, instead of blaming himself that he didn't care at the beginning at all. And still I saw him not wearing mask and he will not wear a mask, uh, you know, and, and things like that. This is, um, this is not an adult behavior. And unfortunately, I think a big part of humanity is still not adult, you know? We are still uh, in adolescence or, or lower <laughs> seen as a whole. Yeah, I think one thing that, that I kind of got from the last time we met was the idea of connecting from the heart and coming from that place of love. And I think that a lot of times, uh, a lot of this behavior that maybe makes no sense to us is very fear, fear driven or ignorance driven. You know, we're afraid of the unknown and we're afraid of the other. And instead of taking the time to see how we're connected and how much shared humanity we have, like right now, like the virus is not discriminated against people in general. So I feel that if we can see that it's like, okay, it's not just me that could be affected, it's other people too. But a lot of times I feel like it's that fear that prevents us from really seeing each other for who we really are. And and I feel like when the we come from that place of fear, it really blocks our heart from really connecting to the love that is there and to be able to embrace the other for just being human. And um, I think uh, the president here, he's very disconnected from his heart, unfortunately. Um, and, and it seems to have other issues as well, which is sad too. 
but yeah. Uh, you're muted. You muted yourself. Yeah, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say a lot of his actions have definitely created a negative impact and have impacted people in a negative way. So uh, it's kind of sad too. Yeah, thank you that you remind me of this exercise we did. I think, Ella, you were not there last time. We did it yesterday with a German yeah. group too, and we can do it here at the, at the end again. That reinforces the experience we had doing this exercise, reinforces that there are ways to deal with problems uh, of this sort, which are not by going out yes, and screaming. Yeah, okay. Um, by 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 blaming others, so the, the, there are ways in in the interiority, you know, of us. Uh, and I will mute Ella. Okay, she. I think she's calling her cats. <laughs> Sometimes we have to get up and get do the dog butler or the cat butler. <laughs> yeah, the, and, and I think it's so very true. So the main thing we need to do and. Unfortunately, only a few people understand it, is to deal with our personal fear, to deal with and get ourselves, ourselves in, into calm, into, you know, and when the fear arises, don't allow it to arise, but not even suppress it, but canalize it in somewhere. Because when it arises, then, as you said, it's, 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 becoming destructive it's becoming dysfunctional the 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 relationship uh, between people and with fear the worst things can happen you know uh, because the mind doesn't doesn't work with fear no so we need to work on ourselves and that's one of the reason why i do these things also publicly you know because i hope somebody will listen and be um encouraged to work on themselves and to work on their own fear instead of saying it's your fault and uh yeah and being angry about what uh what life is bringing to them you know i don't know ella if you listened i muted no sorry about that i had a there's a, a male cat that comes here and causes trouble yeah. and so my cats were trying to defend the house and so I have to go and chase him off uh, otherwise he comes in and they start fighting I don't want that no, no, no. <laughs> couldn't you hear them you're like, ah. <laughs> and their way of fighting is a different way than the one we are talking about now <laughs> exactly <laughs> that is actually funny that the cat fight is happening and then we're talking about these people fighting out exactly here, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, yeah, exactly at the same time. <laughs> I could see him coming through the window, and then I thought, well, let's see if he's going to come to the house, you know, because my cats are on the other window that's open and sc screaming at him. <laughs> but now when he heard me, he went away, I think. Mm -hmm. But your cats are uh, female, aren't they? Yeah, they're female. So it's really strange, no, that a, a male cat is fighting with females. Well, Maybe because he wants to. Love. He wants, to, yeah, he wants to. He wants to have his way with them, and they don't want to. Oh, okay. So he he tries to impose his uh, masculinity by using violence, which is quite typical, I think. <laughs> <laughs> What a coincidence. <laughs> yes. <I know. laughs> talking, of, talking of immature males. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I missed a bit because I had to go yeah. and open the door in the kitchen. It, it was brilliant. about that we, uh, that is a big justification that we people work on themselves instead of yeah. going out and uh, work and on, on their fear and integrate their fear and transmute yeah. their fear into something constructive instead yeah. of giving responsibility to everybody else but not picking their own you know and uh, mm. that's the situation in the world so yeah 
And I think oftentimes we only see the surface, right? We get to see the anger, but not necessarily allow people allowing themselves to label the fear. So oftentimes they're very disconnected from the fear that is really driving the behavior. So uh, it's also kind of scary because people don't even know how to verbalize it or how even acknowledge it for themselves. It's like, oh, I'm coming from a place of fear. But like you said, you know, Instead, we hear people blame and say, you, 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 but it never comes back to, I feel afraid because you are doing this, or this is threatening to my own safety or my sense of security, because it, it often happens, like I'm thinking about like, like the issues of immigration too, like as an immigrant, I feel like we're often targeted because we're seen as a problem or a burden on the state, and then it's like, okay, well, I can see that people have fear, but they don't really see that also the contributions that we make as immigrants and how valuable we are to an economy that benefits so much from that. And so I feel that uh, it's just interesting also noticing that when the dialogues happen around issues on immigration and immigrants and how the community is impacted because people are just not, you know. Yeah, there are two things I would like to say. First of all, often people don't even realize that fear is at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We have not learned to, 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 to recognize our emotions. And often we, we see the secondary emotion, which in this case would be aggressivity or something. No? But the, the primary emotion is, is uh, very much hidden. And because of that, when people stay in fear, when you say they could, they better should recognize what immigrants do for the economy, when they are in fear, the, the mind is not working. The rational mind is not working. So even if you say this argument, it doesn't even arrive. They don't even hear it because they can't, because it's like shutting down the, the logic uh, mind, you know? And so I so often, banged my head against walls because I tried to, to explain by rational reasons things and it never worked. And I think finally I got it. But the question is how else can we reach people? How else can we have them the experience that what they, uh, for instance, blame the immigrants as they do here everywhere, no? Um, how can we make them understand that that's not as they think, you know, and that they have no, there's no reason for their blaming and their negative behavior towards people who are willing and, are, you know, this disponible of, of English, available to, to do, even, you know, here in Italy also to do things which Italians don't want to do anymore, you know, instead of being grateful, they scream. <laughs> Well, it's um, yesterday I saw something. It's quite something disturbing. But I mean, <clears throat> I think the whole world is in a <clears throat> in this kind of mess. But it seems to be that me, <clears throat> that the <clears throat> USA <clears throat> is in a particular strange place where it comes to fear uh, because of the gun culture, you know, and this kind of idea that you have the right to kill another person which is just so, well, I mean, maybe it's going to creep in here as well, but to, to me, it's just such an alien idea that you have the right to kill even a fly. You know, what gives you that right? And yesterday I saw this man, there was a man, uh, 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 um, a colored man who was out jogging and a father and his son, I'm sure you've read this story, Griselda, in America. The father, a father and a son, saw this uh, black man jogging and they thought he was similar to somebody who had been burgling the neighborhood. So they went home and got their guns and followed him and shot him dead. And, you know, and then every day the police shoot somebody who, uh, non-white, obviously, they don't shoot the whites very much, you know, the, and it, it just seems so unbelievably full of, of that is really fear, you know, that you just shoot without asking questions, without finding out what's going on. I mean, that's how far it's gone. 
and and uh, people defend their right to bear arms they say it's it's unconstitutional not to i mean what kind of planet do they want to have and what kind of planet do they live on okay, yeah, then, okay go, go ahead. ahead go ahead um one thing that i was thinking too it's kind of scary in the sense that a lot of the um when those shootings happen, a lot of them happen to be white males yeah. here. And often times, um, somehow they give them the opportunity out, quote unquote, by saying, oh, it was related to mental health. But mm -hmm. if it's a person of color, which I don't think I've seen it happen much. If, well, if let's say if I was a crime related thing and it's, it's the person of color who committed the crime, it's often not associated with mental health when we hear it in the media. So that's a little disturbing too, that a lot of times yeah. it's these young white males who, who have commit these acts of violence and it's like, as a society, how are we failing them? Or, or what can we do for them to, to nurture that heart space so that they don't feel the addiction to violence and to, to carry this kind of acts? Because it is really heartbreaking. and. And the other thing is also kind of sad too, is that it, it's become almost like a norm that we don't become any, uh, at least for myself, speaking for myself, there's times that I don't feel shocked by it because it's almost like it's a reoccurring thing in that when I notice that happening, it's like it might become desensitized to such a terrible event um, because usually I will get really constricted, I will get really sad and I do get sad, but I just almost feels like what well, this is happening more than once a year it's 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 happened and even happened locally here at a um what's the name of the place a, a, a place of worship for people who are jewish i can't think of the name right now it, synagogue. yeah it happened in a synagogue in poway uh that happened here last year in the springtime i think and so it's like happening close to home too and, and there are other things that have happened so it's like it's just sad, you know, that it's happening and it's like, what can we do to help those young men to, to well, not to do that? Because it's like, uh, I mean, it's people's lives that we're losing and so, yeah. I wanted to tie it back to the fear topic, especially for black people, you know? Uh, we have a sort of an archetype that whatever is in the dark, is makes you a fear and then when you see a dark face in in germany for sure uh, they told us uh, uh, also we didn't have uh, black people then when i grew up in in our uh, but they said the black man they didn't mean a, a, a black colored man but a black man be aware when you go at night and so on then that, that comes the black man and it gets you you know i don't think at least from my uh, viewpoint from today they thought about a real black man but they said the black is the archetype for unknown and for something which is which makes you fear no and uh, i think this is unrecognized playing out of, of an archetype, nobody talks about that, you know, and it ties back to the same thing. We need to address the fears we have, and they are often so hidden in, you know, archetypal hidden in, in human history. So uh, at least in our part of the world, I don't know if uh, in Africa they would uh, say the same menaces to young ladies, to young girls, be aware of the black man. I don't know what they would have another thing, but black or dark is also connected with female, no? With the knight. And uh, so the knight is considered dangerous, no? And in many ways, female is considered dangerous. That was, in my opinion, the reason why patriarchy has put down uh, women because they were afraid of them because they they were dangerous you know in some way because women is uh, connected with with earth with the darkness you know and so there is so many more things in at play let's say you no know? it's not just a, a racial thing for me it's really a, a deep human question of becoming aware of all these things
to to end that you know yeah i think that's a really good point and also in terms of connect connecting what you're saying about the fear of the dark or the fear of the unknown or um or even the idea of, of black and what does that mean like am i safe um here i would think it's a lot related to um um racism and xenophobia too because it's like people are not really taking the time to get to know them but then also in connection to the dark i would say that oftentimes even as we work towards integrating ourselves there's a lot of fear of the connecting with our shadow and what does that mean like this is a shadow part of me and oftentimes um i'm thinking from like the uh, you probably heard of like the internal family systems uh with richard and one thing that he mentions about how this there are these different little parts inside of us like the fearful part the, the manager parts and and oftentimes we have these own parts so these are parts that kind of cry for our attention but oftentimes we don't we don't take the time to get to know them because we are too afraid and i feel like uh, oftentimes even for me because i've been doing the inner work for a while i don't always feel like using the language of yeah I'm, I'm working with my shadow because it's like what are people going to think about that it's like what does that mean it's like they don't have the language to frame it sometimes so i don't feel that sense of connection when they don't understand what i'm talking about but i do feel that it's important to integrate those shadow aspects of ourselves so that we can come more into wholeness and just like dark and night is just i mean late in the daytime and the nighttime it's just all part of who we are, you know. We're not all light and we're not all shadow. We're a little bit of both. Absolutely. And I, I yes, I know that is in, in America the racism thing, but I think also racism partly is has the root as at least the racism, this sort of racism in the in the dark side, you know, the fear of the dark. And you say shadow, shadow is the dark, <laughs> you know, and we have to integrate the shadows and then with uh, what you were talking about, the uh, anti-Semitism, I don't know what that sort of fear is, but where that comes from. Seems to be a tradition for hundreds of, of years, I don't know. But it is, also a, <clears throat> it is a tradition for th not hundreds, thousands of years. If you think that the Greeks, when they did their, uh, Aristotle did his plays, uh, his, uh, his theater, uh, they always had <clears throat> um, a goat coming in on the stage and this was a, um, I don't know what you call it now, capra expiatoria. Scapegoat. 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 Yeah. That w people need scapegoats and, and so obviously uh, the Jews have always been um, you know, keeping themselves to themselves, becoming rich and organized and uh, clever at this and that. And, and you know, and, and then people become jealous and uh, envious and they say, oh, it's all their fault. Like in the old uh, days when you had the plague, you know, they blamed it on the Jews, for instance, you know. But uh, you see, Trump blames it on the Chinese, you know, nothing has really come forward much, we should look at that. So everybody, we, human, human nature has, it's a human nature that you want a scapegoat. And also that is a shadow topic, no, which we need to, it's also a fear topic. Uh, we need to, to address that. And I don't see that in the public discourse. It's all right. on exteriority, all, all on, on things which need to be done in the external, yeah. but not in everybody's heart and mind. Taking a deep breath. <laughs> How do you feel? What, what are you feeling in this moment? When I start with me, I was sort of at the edge of feeling 
desperate because how can I change anything with that when people don't blah, blah, blah. On the other hand, realizing that again, I, I expect from others that they change, you know, and then having the, the hope that I can, the little which I can do, maybe I can do it. You know, I was at this, at this edge. How is it for you after what we have talked so far? Uh, well, I, 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 I know we can't change, <clears throat> like they say, everybody wants to change the world, but nobody wants to change themselves. Um, I mean, you know, everybody is responsible in their tiny little bit for everything, you know, that goes on, in my opinion. So you can't really blame everybody else. You're, you're part of that problem somehow, which is a very difficult dilemma. Some people are more enlightened than others, you know, but then I think also you can, even if you can't change things, you can influence things around you and you can influence people around you by having a conviction and a belief, you know, and I think it rubs off. If you just go around being negative all day, you know, everybody around you is going to say it become more negative if you do the opposite. Um, it's amazing how how positive people. If you if you walk in the street and you just smile at somebody you'd never seen before, they will smile back, you know, and they'll say, "Oh, that's nice." But if you frown at them and say, "Oh, you know," they'll frown back. It's I think it's quite simple, really, and we think it's so. We try to think it's complicated, but maybe it's not complicated. For me, I feel that I feel very blessed because I do have those opportunities to to kind of do a lot of the inner work that I'm doing, even though sometimes it feels really exhausting. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, what's the point of this? Is this too much getting in touch with all this suffering or whatever needs to be transformed? But I do see the benefits and I do feel that I'm, I'm blessed in the sense that I say, I'm going to take my time to journal about how I feel or I'm going to take the time to make some art to reconnect with myself. And some people are really numb and so disconnected that they just kind of go through the motions about leaving, but they don't really, they're not even conscious about what's driving their behavior. And for me, even though sometimes it feels like, oh, I wish I didn't know about that. <laughs> I feel like at least I have the awareness and I'm working towards the acceptance that it will lead me to change some parts of me that I would like to change or transform but um so in a way i feel that I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to have the time and the tools to name those things when the opportunities arise and i don't always do it perfectly but um i do believe like like how ella mentioned like sometimes if we come from a place where let's say for example if i, I am cultivating peace and calmness then someone else might sense that and they they could benefit from that calming energy versus me just allowing a, a moment of anxiety drive me, then they would also feel the anxiety because that's what I'm emanating, you know, so yeah. Yeah, that's great. What I feel, uh, what I'm, I'm about to learn is not to go into arguments, even when I'm triggered, try not to, 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 to talk back, you know, try not to, to, to insist on what I know better and things like that, what I did in the past very often. So trying to find a, a way of equilibrium, of, 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 of balance, uh, saying, yes, maybe you are right, yeah, but, or something, no? Or maybe not but, maybe and, no? And uh, I, I, I don't want to take part one part and let, let uh, and be against the other part. And I try to, you know, to, to have some position in the middle without, let's say in this way, acknowledging the existence and the rightfulness of both visions or how many, how many uh, arguments are there, uh, but not saying this is right and this is wrong. 
because I think this polarity of right and wrong, this is creating the whole whole problem and nothing is always right and nothing is always wrong. So find the right pieces and find the wrong pieces and then sort out the things. That's That's what I'm trying to do and you know, with groups like this or the other groups I'm participating or leading, it's not a problem. It's more a problem when, when you meet people who are not yet uh, ready to, 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 to interact on, on in this level, you know. And then there was, who was it? Anne Roberts. Uh, she gave me the book, How to Do Impossible Conversations. Oops. Oops, that doesn't show, no? <laughs> Let me take the, the screen away. <laughs> I saw part of the title, but it was funny. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> How to have impossible conversations. I have read a little bit, and I think most of that theoretically I know. But now it's the question how to practice it. And I have to say, I'm biased in the sense that I prefer to talk with people like you and not searching for, for other conversations where I could study that, you know, because I'm always then so much, um, I'm emotional, that's a problem, you know. I think, I think one of the biggest uh, weapons, you know, the most important weapons uh, around is humor, sense of humor, and, and to have a sort of be happy and jolly, because if you're like that, you know, you, people, how are they going to be angry with you if you're, if you, you know, if, if it doesn't have an effect on you? And for instance, you know, and when I, and, and, or just to try and sort of be flip. I, I maybe I'm a bit flippant, but I think that's how I am. People often say to me, some people that I don't know many people like this. They say, they come out and they say, you know, I'm not a racist, but yeah. And then I say, that's what all racists say. And then they don't know how to proceed. And you kind of, you can disarm people. And then maybe they'll think, you know, oh, what, what is she talking about? I don't know. I think you can, by being nice to people, you can actually make them see that, look, you're being, you're completely, how can you say these things? I, I, I'm, I agree with you there, because especially on Facebook, there are people who, who come up with the most horrendous, terrible, uh, prejudice against immigrants is one big thing, against Muslims is another big thing, you know, and so on and so forth. And then, uh, and, and, um, and then also it's a lot to do with also very uh, uh, strident feminists, you know, people who have very, like this, you know, um, and who can't see any, um, they don't see, they see, have blinkers on and they don't see at all to the side. And the, the only, there's no point, to, I've decided, there's no point. Um, there's no point talking to these people because they will just not, they have to do other, they have to somehow change themselves. But you can't, there are people you can't really influence, unfortunately. These people in this book, they say, that you need to ask questions. Questions which bring them uh, to the point where they say yes to something where they before have denied it. So that is a real big art of, uh, of doing it. I, I don't think I'm able to do, but that could be a good um, task for us, you know, to learn how, how to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is... Um, come out of the comfort zone. <laughs> um, I was going to say that um, I think there's a lot of wisdom in, 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 in both of your approaches, though, adding the humor or also being very direct and calling people out in a way because it just kind of stops that. Um, 
But one thing or technique that I heard and I have a hard time practicing it sometimes, it's almost like being, um, what is it like doing the reflective listening? So just basically say, what I heard you say is, and so just repeat it back. And so that that way, either being illogical, they can actually hear themselves. Um, I haven't really tried that, but I think in my work, um, and I find that for me, I also am I'm super sensitive sometimes to people's behavior that I notice that reactivity within me. And so I let that, you know, get to me. And oftentimes it just helps for me to be able to say, hmm, you might be right. And I go farther into it because it's like, am I willing to, am I willing to compromise my sense of inner peace if I'm going to have a dialogue or a conversation with this person and we know we're not going to go anywhere? Like, like, what's the point? Like, why am I engaging with this person? Am I feeling lonely or am I just feeling like I want to talk to somebody? Why am I even wasting my energy <laughs> in this interaction that is like literally draining me out? But um, I do have a hard time being a little more direct with people and, and being able to ask like, why would you say that? Or what makes, or, or more come from a place of curiosity so people don't get defensive and be able to say, I'm curious to know, can you tell me more about that? And I think that would invite a little more dialogue and them opening up what's driving that behavior or the thought, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah, thank you, I can, I can relate to that. I have the problem when I was let's say, drawn into a conversation, then I realize that it goes in the wrong direction. How to step out of it? I find it very difficult. Just go away, you can't. Uh, uh, you, you need to find a justification, and then when the other people come behind you, how, how to get out of that? Uh, do you have any idea? But this is the example of how things escalate, and that's how violence escalates you see that you sort of stand your ground and you and you don't want to give in you know at all you just sort of and, th and then it just gets worse and it just goes round in circles all the time it doesn't really go anywhere it just goes round and round and round and the i mean i i would i would copy what the teenagers do when their mother is trying to convince them of something they just look at her my grandchildren and just say oh whatever I think one thing that comes to mind is buying time. Like to tell myself, I have the right to take some a pause between this conversation and or take a little break before I get back to you. So sometimes I, I may need to say, let me get back to you on that, mm -hmm. which means I'm buying time without telling them I'm buying time. And that may also mean giving myself 24 hours, which I'm not that good at, but 24 hours gives me that cooling period for me to gain a little more perspective and think about what am I gonna say or Am I really going to engage in this conversation or do I choose not to re-engage? And one thing I have about myself is I, I tend to over-explain myself. I go into too much detail as to why can I, why I can't do it. And I think it's really important for me not to be too polite in that sense and just um, either drop it and not over-explain myself or just be, be very brief and just say something as simple as, I'm sorry, but this is not going to work out for me or, but not over-explain myself because the moment I start explaining myself, it becomes into like a negotiation. And sometimes we don't need a negotiation. We, we want to get out. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so we have figured out today what we can do. <laughs> As Ella said, uh, to, to, to be able to influence people, we need to develop these capacities. No? And I'm very aware of that. Although for many years I was studying, you know, uh, conversations and things. As soon as I'm triggered, my emotions come up, it becomes difficult. And I'm unfortunately an emotional person. And even if you don't see it, but probably you would see it when you know me better. I begin to talk and talk and talk and talk. And then I get deeper and deeper and deeper into, <laughs> into certain nets. Anyway. What did you say? What you said? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. You know, whatever you say, you know, whatever. I don't really care. <laughs> but Ella, can you do a demonstration with a hand when they do whatever?
In some way, it is uh, it came to me just now with that. It's a sort of a power game because it makes uh, you clear. I don't succumb under under you. You know, uh, I'm just standing here and okay. <laughs> I'm just walking away. You know, and just you get on with it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When mm. it's your own husband or so, then walking away is difficult because he walks behind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we had a nice chat today again yeah. and really, really, really nice and even some important topics, I think. I would love if you just we do a little check out and then do the exercise as a final piece, okay? Who goes first? Well, let me go uh, just quickly say before I go. Um, I've um, last couple, two, three nights, I've been dreaming about the coronavirus. Um, not, uh, not in a sort of analytical way. I've just been amongst all these people wearing masks and staying away, you know, in this kind of very strange atmospheres. Um, so obviously it's... Uh, I think this seeing people with masks and things, you know, makes it, it does influence you um, as something. Uh, I do, I've, I'm not saying it's frightening, you know, it's just slightly disturbing, I would say, these dreams when I go out amongst these crowds, when I haven't been amongst crowds for so long. So I thought, I thought uh, this morning I had another one last night and I thought, well, that's interesting. What do you make of it? What do you uh, learn from it? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what it means. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think obviously it's something that ha ha is having an influence on me without me knowing or wanting it to, obviously. You know, that's what I make of it, that it's something I need to... It's something that is disturbing me, although I'm kind of thinking it doesn't really worry me that much, but I think it does. I'm curious to know if you um, either journal about it once you remember the dream, or if you do any type of sketching or drawing just to kind of connect with it. Um, that might help to perhaps uh, make sense of it, so it's not, mm, what's the word? Not disturbing you, but it's like that energy sometimes could carry on with the day. So maybe that could be a way to just process and let it go. Just an idea. Yeah, I think you're right. But I mean, I think it's, I think it's, a, it's, a, I think these are fears that I need to deal with. Uh, and I think it's lately that it started in the last few days because a, a niece of mine that I'm very close to has got it. And I think that kind of brought it home to me that it's something that's affected me as well not just all these people uh, thousands of people on the on the in the news um and that's because that's when it started so i think it's uh, i think i'm worried about uh, about her and then i have another thing i i know i i know i'm worried about her obviously and then um another thing i'm worried about is um my brother's son, they've just had a baby. And when I look at the pictures of this baby, I get this awful feeling there's something not right with it. I don't know, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Uh, it's just a, a very strong feeling I have about this child that's only a week old. Um, and, and I'm very worried about that actually. Um, and then, you know, um, the fact that they're over there, I'm over here, doesn't really matter because you're so, with the, the internet and that, you're so close and connected anyway, you know. So I think, uh, I think these uh, dreams are, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's my anxiety coming out.
Thank you, Ella. I think that was important to share because it reminds us that there might be still more underneath than we know. The unconscious is quite huge and we try to swim on the surface as well as we can and every now and then go a little deeper and try to make sense. I, my check out would be, I'm really happy that we can talk in this way. And it's even when we are in person together, Ella, it is even different because then we chat more, no? But in this space, this is really con preserved for, for, for this sort of con conversation. And it has this, do you say stringency? That is, that it can go deeper and deeper and deeper, no? And that's, uh, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I'll do mine. I'm just very grateful to be here with you. I always look forward to connecting and, and I do feel that sense of connection, especially because I do get lonely and it feels isolating here. And it's always important for me to remember, at least lately, what spaces feel safe and does the container feel safe and do I feel nourished? And I feel very nourished and feel safe being vulnerable and being open, sharing my thoughts with, with you. And uh, and I do appreciate you, Ella, sharing your vulnerability and being able to name what's beneath the surface of these dreams and what they're bringing up for you. Um, so I think that's just really important. And I think if I had a nephew or if I had a newborn son, I don't have any children, I would definitely feel concerned for the safety of this little one during this time. So I think I, I can sense that fear and concern about would this child make it almost uh, because it's, it's are difficult times. Um, so I think it's good to name those fears. I feel that this was a very interesting conversation how we started with the, also even the cat fight and everything else. And then we did go very deep into um, talking about fears and, and uh, I really enjoyed the dialogue. And so it's good to be here with both of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was another one of the co-creative conversations where we didn't know where we go, but we went deep, somehow spiraling there. Thank you. So I would like uh, Ella to introduce you to this exercise. Um, we name our names, uh, not, uh, you don't say, uh, the word is I love you. And you don't say I love me, but you say your, your name. Okay, and I start, I say, I love you, Griselda. I love you, Ella. And I love you, Heidi. I can go next. I love you, Ella. I love you, Heidi. And I love you, Griselda. I love you, Griselda. And I love you, Heidi. And I love you, Ella. Yeah, thank you. And let's keep this love in our hearts and make it grow. Give yes, order yes. every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. We we'll see you another time. And it was really great. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs>